Hi everyone, my name is David Kelly, I'm the Program Director for the eLearning Guild and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another Twist Conversation. I'm very pleased to be welcoming Steve Howard and Neil Lasher from FireEye to the conversation this morning. Welcome guys. Morning, how are you doing? Doing well. Steve, I'll start with you. Can you both take it? Steve, I'll start with you and if you can each just take a moment and introduce yourselves to the audience. Hi, well good morning. Um, I'm Steve Howard, I'm the training manager here at FireEye. So I'm responsible for a team of instructional designers who put together our technical training and our sales training. And uh, we're training our customers, our partners, and our um, internal users how to use our appliances and so on. So that's my main my main role. And strategizing for the future, what we're going to be doing in the next year or two. And Neil? Hi, good morning all. I'm Neil Lasher. Um, I'm a senior instructional designer at FireEye. And um, my role specifically is to have a number of projects that I'm writing from scratch, um, mostly at the moment, believe it or not, in classroom training. Although uh, most of you will know that I'm uh, well known for both class and for e-learning. So uh, my specifics at the moment are in troubleshooting for, uh, uh, for FireEye um, and in forensics and some of the new products that we're just coming on the market with, which, uh, which is pretty cool. And I know that both of you working for FireEye, um, IT security in terms of the, making sure that we, the computer systems that we have are safe is a very important topic. It's something that we added to the mLearnCon conference and expo as a, as a session that you guys did exploring the work that we do and how it, how it can be impacted uh, and how it ties to IT security. And there was a lot of buzz around that. And we've added it to the DevLearn conference to go into greater detail in a workshop. We have this idea of, of IT security from a consumer standpoint. We hear these stories about you know bank cards records being being uh, compromised and hear them all the time, but we don't hear it a lot in the context of the work that we do in ID and in e-learning. Can you talk a little bit about that that idea of IT security and how it applies to a learning and development department? So um, there's a few things in my mind about this. One of them is that. Um, everybody is a target, no matter how small or large they are. So in terms of security, everybody have, um, needs to be careful of, against uh, any kind of attack. So as a, for instance, um, you as a small company, the e-learning e guild, um, actually has a huge number of customers. You have, uh, well, you probably know the numbers, I don't, but tens of thousands of customers. And many of those are very senior people in organizations throughout the world. Um, if your data gets compromised, then somebody can get access to their data and that there may be a route to attack those individuals. So even if eLearning Guild themselves are not a target for, um, you know, uh, uh, oh, complicated um, uh, maps or uh, plans for things or intellectual property, um, your customers are. So, you know, David Kelly, you might get an email that says, you know, here's a phishing thing that gets you to download a thing that gets access to your computer. And then with, with somebody getting access to your computer, they can get access to your customer list. And getting your customer list, who knows where that leads. Um, every company has that same kind of issue. And, and training people in particular have access to a great deal of data about the company and about um, what they're doing, what their future plans are. Um, any of this can then be a, a hole that uh, potential attackers can make use of um, to, to compromise in so many ways. As a, for instance, one of the ones you mentioned, credit cards. Uh, Target had uh, uh, um, an, an HVAC contractor who had access to Target's network in order to manage their um, HVAC remotely so that they could you know, switch on the AC, maintain it, do whatever, get alerts. Um, that was a vector for the attackers to get in and find their way through servers to the, the cash um, the endpoints where people were buying things. You know, the, what do you call those things? Little, uh, point of sale. Mm -hmm. Point of sale, right. So they got to the point of sale terminals, but through an HVAC contractor who was probably sitting there saying, nobody worries about me. I'm ordinary. You know, I'm just a little HVAC contractor. I don't have anything useful. Um, we're all at risk is the point. So from the training side, because we touch everybody in an organization in some way or another, if we're putting out um, training content that is in any way compromisable, then we're at risk. All right, let me look at this from a very slightly different angle, which uh, may build on what Steve's just spoken about. Um, everybody who's watching this right now is watching it using a browser, using a computer on the internet. We all know that the internet is not a safe place. Now, we all really know that, but we, we don't really play the rules properly. 
Um, if I said to you that I would like you to go into the most dangerous area of the city that you live in and walk around with a fan of the largest notes your country makes and wave them around in the air, you'd say to me, don't be crazy, I'm going to get mugged. Um, well, okay, would you do that on the internet? Um, and the answer is, well, no, I wouldn't, but actually, yes, you do. Um, we often all have the same usernames and passwords on lots of different sites. We have um, the same PIN numbers for our credit card numbers, uh, for our credit cards if we have PIN numbers. Um, we often allow one program to use another program to or supposedly authenticate um, our user, um, our, 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 our user. So therefore we allow, we're on Google Hangouts now, you've actually come onto a Google Hangout um, using your normal regular Google Mail address. Now, all this sharing of information makes it much easier for people to infiltrate from lots of different places in the way Steve was talking about with the HVAC company and Target. Now, when it comes to learning, we have been very blasé. And I think we've been very blasé with a lot of things that we've done over, over a very long time. So I think the time has come that what we need to do is we need to take a really deep, close look at what are we creating in learning. E-learning is primarily HTML. It's a web page, no different than you're looking at now. Um, I could infiltrate the web page we're on now, so therefore I could infiltrate your learning. Um, I can take a photograph and put it on the web that's got something in it that you don't know is there. And when it lands on your machine, I can actually make it do something that you don't know it's doing in the background. And this is really what it's all about. We've got to change our behavior. We've got to change the way we're doing things. We've got to fess up to the fact that what we're doing actually probably isn't very secure. And the only people who know that at the moment, actually are your IT department, who are saying, sorry, you can't do that. The that interesting thing, really though, is that with IT, when they're saying no like that, often they know that the, um, going out on the internet is risky, but they don't truly know and understand what the risks are. So rather than fully understand and give you granular control and access to the things you need. They just say, nope, and make so, life difficult for you. So let me, let me take it down a level, because I think what you guys are talking about, most people have an awareness of, like you guys have been talking about. Oh, yeah, I know it's not safe, but there, it almost seems like the gap is, but it doesn't really apply to the work that I do, or there's nothing that I could do about it. How, and Neil, you started to touch on this, how does, the work that I do as an instructional designer or a developer, how does that, how, my learning content, how is that opening me up to risk? How is, I mean, if it's, if they're just going through my LMS, what's, what's the risk? Can you get, can you take it down a little bit of level and, and tie it to yes. the work that I'm doing? Let me take it right down to the bare bones level. Um, the piece of e-learning you did this morning, um, did it have a bit of flash in it? Who created the piece of flash? was a flash created by a third party person from a third party company who may actually have subcontracted it to somebody else in Asia, China, India, wherever it happened to be, somebody that you don't know who actually wrote the code. Um, flash has action script in it. What did the action script, script say? Have you got full control over it? The answer is no. Um, where did you get your pictures from that are in your e-learning? Now, most of us will say, oh, well, we buy those or we get those from the right place. But you know as well as I know that in the vast majority of cases, they've right-clicked on something and said save as, and they've stolen a picture here or there. And if you're willing to sit there and say, oh, I've never done that in my lifetime, and I've never actually used a picture that I found on the web, well, come on, we all have at some level. Um, if you didn't know where it came from, and if I sent you 20 pictures today and said, hey, I know you're doing some e-learning on the following, and here are some great pictures that I found that I'm willing to give you permission to use, um, and they're absolutely what you want, you're going to use them. Now, that's no different than, well, okay, um, would you, David, click on the link from a Nigerian banker that's got 20 billion that he wants you to help him get out of the country by, well, very easily. Um, all I need to know from you, Dave, is um, can you send me your bank account details, a copy of your passport, a blank headed bit of note paper with your signature on the bottom, um, and your full bank details and credit card and PIN numbers, and I'll put 20 billion in your bank today. Are you interested? Because there are still people who fall for that, otherwise they wouldn't do it. Um, in the same way, if I sent you 20 pictures today and said, if I sent you 20 pictures today and said, Dave, you might want to use these, they're really great, I give you full rights. The only thing you really need to be doing today 
is getting in touch with me personally and saying, did you just send me 20 pictures? Mm. Because we don't know where they really came from. And, and if you don't believe me, come on this uh, come on this workshop. I'm going to show you how an email can come from somewhere you don't expect it to come from, and you'll believe it came from the right place. We um, spoke at Emily and Con about also uh, the practices that you might do while developing mobile learning. And uh, one of the common things, so FireEye has been looking at mobile mobile um, risks recently, and one of the things that we've found is um, often people, when they're developing, are using uh, standard APIs that they can download off the web. You know, I need an API to uh, get access to the camera or an API to get access to um, the microphone or whatever. And one of the ones that's become quite common is a, an API for adverts. So, as you know, many people, they develop um, apps and they put them on um, Android or Apple app stores um, for free and include advertising so they can earn some revenue. Um, so you can either develop the code for the adverts yourself or you can download an API from somewhere and uh, do a couple of settings so that you'd say, oh, my target audience for this app are um, 25 to 30 year olds and in IT, whatever, and then appropriate adverts get served. It's actually a nice, easy thing. It makes perfect sense to do that rather than develop your own code. However, um, some of the app, sorry, some of the APIs that you can download to do this are malicious. And they also do some additional things that you don't expect, like they rifle through your contact lists, they look at your SMS messages, they may even get access to your microphone and so on. But you didn't know that that was going to go on because you were only looking at adverts. Um, so, you know. Hey, Steve. Uh -huh. Hey, Steve, we don't want them to be paranoid, you know, about what they're doing. We want them to be very paranoid about what they're doing. Right. Uh <laughs> Um, and another thing on the same vein, uh, whether you're doing mobile development or app um, or even PC uh, Mac development, is simply using an API that has many features, um, but not switching off the features you don't use. So it's possible to, um, oh, I saw a conference app one time that wanted access to Bluetooth, to Wi-Fi, to camera, to microphone, to pretty much everything. And yet nowhere in the app were there features where this was being used. So this was queried by a few people saying, you know, what's going on? Why do you need my microphone? And again, this was a, a standard API that was used by the developer, and he didn't go through and remove or switch off the features that he wasn't using. So um, it was being flagged as these having these permissions, even though it didn't use them. Um, so you know, we need to take care when we look at that. Uh, sorry, when we're developing, to make sure that we you know, don't use features, or sorry, leave switch features on that we're not using. Because um, that's also leaving uh, opportunity that you don't really want um, for bad things to happen. So, so you've, you've, you're painting a really important picture here, and the fact that Neil described it as making you very paranoid, I'm sure a lot of people who are hearing this are going to feel that way. What are the things that I, as a learning professional, can do? Because as I'm listening to you guys, I feel like there's, there's two primary things that people need to learn about in this space, one being literally what can I do? What should I, what, what should I be changing about the work that I'm doing today to make it more secure? But the other piece of it is what do I need to learn about so that I can better have conversations with my IT group to make sure that things are secure? Because there's gonna, you're going to need to interface with your IT group about this and you need to be able to do it effectively. So in those two veins, both in terms of the work that I'm doing today, what should I be doing differently? And also what do I kind of need to be learning about in order to be better interfacing with my IT in this area. Can you talk a little bit about those two areas? Yeah. Let me let me take that first. Dave, you've, you've almost hit the nail on the head. That there, are two, there are two major things you can do. Number one is get educated. Um, get educated in, in a lot of things that you're not educated in now, and that is how does or how do the people who are trying to be malicious work? Um, how do they infiltrate? How will they infiltrate? How will they look to infiltrate your organization? Get to understand how the web works and how and how the web works badly if I want it to work badly. And it's not difficult to actually write a bit of malware. Once you know how to do it, it's really easy to do. So that's the first thing, get educated. Um, once you know what it's all about, it will make you think in a different way about what you create. When someone sends you that picture, you will think about, hmm, what can I do to that picture to make sure that picture hasn't got something in it that I don't want there to be? Um, 
when somebody sends you that bit of code to put into your great bit of JavaScript that you can drop onto your page that will make snowflakes fall, um, actually, what else is it doing? Learn to read that bit of code so you can actually understand what's in it. Um, learn how to test that bit of code so that actually when you use it, it's not going to do something to your systems. Um, one of the big things you can do as a trainer within your organization is start to educate your users as well about how how they work, how what they do. They bring their own devices into the organization, what that means, uh, what they're bringing with them, how freely and easily. Well, actually, I'll ask you a question, Dave. This one's always one that I like. Um, if it's your birthday and when you got into the office in the morning, there was a USB stick with a big happy birthday sticker on it sitting on your desk, what would you do with it? Uh, I don't think I'd put it in my computer without finding out a little bit more about it. I bet you, of the people who are watching this video, 75% of people would just plug it in without thinking about it. Yeah, you're probably right. I would that's, get tired. That's the education that we need to get out there as to what that can do. And that's really, that's the simplest way in. Um, and yeah, I would do that. You know, somebody once, somebody said actually at MLearnCon, the best way in is to actually go into a conference and drop all over the floor USB sticks that have got the Apple the, the Apple logo on them uh, in a little envelope that says iPhone 6. And everybody's going to plug it in because they think they've got the pictures of the next iPhone. They're not even going to think about it. They're just going to plug it into their machine. Well, it's funny. One of the things that I see people doing a lot um, kind of tied to this is, is everyone's on Facebook. Everyone's using Facebook. How many times have you gone to a website where it says log in with Facebook? Nobody looks at the permissions that that's giving. They just, right. oh, okay, this is going to make it easier. I don't have to create a username and password. I'm just going to log into Facebook. But it comes up with that screen that says you're giving us the rights to do these things. Nobody's reading that. It's like the, it's like, uh, the, the terms and conditions of it's, any website that you just say, oh, yeah, I, I, it's the biggest lie in the world. Yes, I read the terms and conditions. Of course I did. Nobody, right. nobody does that. Uh, it's, it's interesting it's that you even used that example because that, um, that's one of the examples we discussed um, a few weeks ago at MLearnCon. Um, Facebook access, like you say, gives you access to many things, and one of them is if you give an app access uh, or approval via Facebook, then that app can get access to your contacts and so on, and who knows where that can lead. Um, I, I describe myself as quite paranoid these days as I learn more and more. I haven't updated or even used the Facebook app on my phone uh, for many months because of some of the things that Facebook began to add and permissions that it demanded. Um, one of the things that we talk about is the difference between Android and iOS. Everybody treats um, Android quite rightly as being the more insecure um, um, operating system because of a great many holes that exist because it's a much more open um, operating system and a much more open ethos, whereas Apple is very closed. But um, one of the things that Android does do is give you a list of all the permissions that an app requests, and it can be a really long list. Um, you rightly point out people will often ignore that. But when I see, you know, a flashlight app that wants to know uh, my location and wants to see my contacts, I I'm not going to install that. Most people, it would appear anyway, would just click through and ignore it. Now, on an iPhone, you don't see the same list of permissions. You see a less granular list where it might say that this, this app wants to know your location. Um, but you don't see right down to the level of um, API access and so on the way Android does. So you can be more informed on Android and less informed with, informed with iOS and not realize um, exactly what's been requested of you when you say yes. So I know you guys are going to be... I'm sorry, I muted my line. I have dogs barking in the background. Can you hear me right yeah, now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so you... You're going to be doing a workshop on this uh, at Devlin this year. Can you give me an idea? I know we're running a little short on time, but give me an idea. If I'm going to be in your workshop, what am I going to be experiencing during that day when I'm together with you? Okay. This is one of the things you're going to be experiencing. You'll see Neil holding a, um, a drive that says, uh, <laughs> files isolate. Um, and to be honest with you, if I asked you to plug it into your machine, I hope you would say no. <laughs> but what you'll be able to see on that is is how e-learning can actually get infiltrated and can um, and can upset the apple cart in your organization. What you'll go home with is you will go home with the knowledge of how that works. You'll know what to look for. I hope you will be more paranoid when you leave than when you came. 
Um, certainly more paranoid than you are now, even though you've heard what we've been saying for the last few minutes. Uh, but we all, what you'll also go home with is you'll go home with a lot of information that says that you can go and talk to your IT department and say, hey guys, you were right. You're pretty clever at stopping us getting into various places, but now we understand the risks. Here's the checklist we've gone through. Here's the things we've done. This is what we've done to make sure that what we want you to put out onto our networks is not going to cause damage to our company. Will you work with this, please? Right. We will, we will give you the tools to, um, number one, as Neil pointed out, be paranoid, so, so you know and understand exactly what the risks are. Um, with the internet, with apps, with the use of USB sticks and whatever, but also the tools to say, I've done my due diligence and I've plugged all the caps that I'm possibly able to. So this uh, code, this app, this website that I've developed is as secure as I'm able to make it. Um, and actually show the IT department that you know and understand the risks and know how to mitigate them. Um, and actually help un IT understand some of the risks that maybe they have just simply said no against without fully researching themselves. It's really quite easy to say, look, I just switched off access to, to X website or I, I didn't allow you to bring in your own devices into the network, so now we're secure. Um, it isn't really a truth, it's just a, if we, if we shut the door and lock it, we feel safer, but it's much better to be informed and clever with how you address things rather than just uh, shut your eyes. Hey, I should say also, um uh, Dave, that if Steve gives you a, uh, if you do come on this workshop and see if Steve gives you a USB as a takeaway, think twice before you plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it sounds like you guys are going to have a great experience to, uh, covering a topic that is not often covered uh, it, in our industry, and it's it's going to be a growing topic. So we're really excited to be having it on on the DevLearn program this year. If you want to learn more about this workshop or any of the different programming elements that are going to be going on at DevLearn this year, I encourage you to visit our website, devlearn14.com. The DevLearn Conference and Expo is taking place October 29th through 31st in Las Vegas, and with the workshops like the one we're talking about here, taking place on the 27th and 28th. Uh, more details available at devlearn.com. I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us here today. Neil, Steve, I want to thank you for spending time having a conversation with me today. Uh, you're Thank welcome, you. Or oh, anytime. We will see you next time on Twist Conversations. Take care, everybody. <laughs>